The movie begins at a baseball game. In 1978, North Denver, Gwen cheers for her brother, Finney, during a baseball game. Bruce, the batter, misses the ball twice, but then hits a home run on the third pitch, securing their team's victory. After the game, Bruce compliments Finney's pitching. Later, Bruce spots a black van while riding his bike. Days pass, and Finney's father complains about his loud slurps during breakfast. Gwen accidentally drops the bread keeper lid, apologizing for the noise. On their way to school, Finney and Gwen notice a missing person flyer for Bruce. They also witness a fight between Robin and the school bully, Moose. Robin easily defeats Moose, and Gwen defends Robin's actions. Finney, however, is uncomfortable discussing the mysterious grabber that took their previous bully, Vance. Gwen reassures him that the rumor about the grabber isn't true. During science class, Finney plays with his rocket ship, Pen, and glances at his crush, Donna. After class, he notices bullies eyeing him. Robin enters and scares them off by talking about beating up Moose. Robin advises Finney to stand up for himself and helps him with maths. Meanwhile, Gwen is summoned to the principal's office and confesses that her dreams are sometimes right. After school, she leaves her brother to stay at a friend's house. Finney finds his father, Terence, passed out and tidies up for him. Later, he watches scary movies and eats ice cream before falling asleep. In the morning, Gwen screams as Terence whips her with a belt, blaming her for police questioning. Gwen threatens to drop his liquor bottle, and despite warnings, she does. Terence hits her again, insisting her dreams are just dreams. Finney comforts his sobbing sister. On a certain day, Robin leaves to go to a store when he encounters a man exiting a black van. That evening, news spreads about Robin's mysterious disappearance. Gwen, Robin's sibling, expresses concern for her worried brother, who is searching for his missing friend. Gwen's brother asks her if she can use her dreams to try to locate Robin, but Gwen reminds him that she cannot control her dreams. Nevertheless, Gwen prays in her room, asking Jesus to provide her with a clue that could help find Robin. When Gwen's father comes into the hallway and turns on the lights, Gwen quickly gets into bed. Before leaving, Gwen's father tells her that he loves her, and Gwen reciprocates. Some days later, with Robin absent and unable to protect him, the school bullies physically assault Finney. Finney's sister promptly comes to his defense, striking one of the bullies, Maddie, with a rock. The sister then engages in a physical altercation with another bully, Buzz, who ends up knocking her to the ground. With Finney's sister defeated, the bullies Buzz and Matt continue beating up Finney. In a science class, the students are instructed to find partners, leaving Finney without one. However, a student named Donna volunteers to be Finney's partner. After school, Gwen teases Finney about his partnership with Donna. Gwen then departs to spend the night at a friend's house again. Soon after, Finney is walking on an empty path when he encounters a man stumbling out of a black van and dropping his groceries. Finney offers to help the man, who introduces himself as a magician. Finney notices black balloons inside the van, and the man opens the door to retrieve them. However, the man uses the balloons to trap Finney, who fights back by stabbing the man's arm with a pen. Despite Finney's resistance, the man sprays some kind of substance into Finney's mouth and drags him inside the van. When Finney regains consciousness, he finds himself lying on a bare mattress in a nondescript room. The kidnapper, complaining about his wounded arm, assures Finney that he won't hurt him anymore. Suddenly, a phone rings in the distance, so the kidnapper promises to explain everything to Finney when he returns. As soon as the kidnapper leaves the room and closes the door, Finney tries to open it, but finds it locked. He then explores the room further, discovering another section with a toilet. Going back to the mattress, Finney notices a black phone on the wall, but it is disconnected. Meanwhile, Terence calls Gwen at her friend's house, asking where Finney is. Realizing that her brother has been taken, Gwen immediately rushes out. The police are soon alerted to Finney's disappearance, and Gwen prays for her brother's safe return. Finney wakes up to the phone ringing, so he checks it. But the kidnapper tells him that it doesn't work. The kidnapper promises to take Finney home soon, but he says he has something else to deal with first. Thinking that he is about to get caught, Finney promises not to tell the police anything if the kidnapper releases him. The kidnapper, however, just laughs, saying that it's not about the police. Finney then suspects that someone else is in the house, so he threatens to scream. The kidnapper tells him that he won't be heard when the door is shut, leaving Finney to wonder about the identity and motives of his captor. After the kidnapper leaves the room, Finney starts screaming, though the room is soundproof. He tries to reach the window, but it is too high for him to access. Suddenly, the phone rings, so Finney picks it up, but there is no response on the other end. Later, as Finney sleeps, he hears a creaking sound coming from the phone. He is startled when he realizes that the kidnapper is watching him. Finney asks the kidnapper for food, but the man says he cannot give him any yet. 
The boy asks the kidnapper why he is being held there, and the kidnapper admits that he wanted to look at Finny. Soon, Finny wakes up to the phone ringing again. He answers it, and a boy's voice calls him by name. Startled, Finny hangs up and backs away, but the phone rings once more. When he answers, the voice tells him not to hang up. The boy on the phone tells Finny that he does not remember his own name because that is the first thing people lose when they die. However, the boy says they have met before, and Finny's arm was meant for something. This makes Finny realize that the boy on the phone is Bruce. Finney asks if the phone rang for him specifically, and Bruce says it did for all of them, but only Finney could hear it. The kidnapper also hears the phone, but he does not believe it. Bruce then instructs Finney to find a loose tile, where he can dig a tunnel through the dirt. Gwen dreams about Bruce's life, and then sees Finney screaming inside a house. She ventures out in the middle of the night to find the house. Meanwhile, Finney discovers a loose tile and starts digging. The next day, the grabber brings him breakfast, but forgets to lock the door. A mysterious voice warns Finney that it's a trap. Billy's ghost appears, warning him that the grabber is waiting upstairs to punish him. Despite the danger, Finney cautiously heads upstairs. Finney returns downstairs and eats. Billy, now agitated, calls again, but claims he's no longer Billy. Finney notices a shaking soda bottle and a torn cable in the wall. Gwen dreams about Billy delivering newspapers when the grabber took him. Finney finds the cable, loops it around the bars, and climbs toward the window. Unfortunately, the bars break, causing him to crash back down. That evening, Gwen discusses her dreams with her father, Terence, who shares a tragic story about her mother's dreams leading to terrible consequences. Despite the difficult circumstances, Gwen believes that her dreams can help her find Finney. This makes Terence reconsider, so he helps Gwen search for the house in her dreams, hoping that they will be able to locate their son. Soon, the police visit the home of Max to ask him about the missing boy. Max immediately invites them inside, revealing that he is also investigating the abductions. He rambles about the children being taken on their way home from school, except for Robin, who was taken on a Saturday afternoon. Max insists that the abductor has a house and a garage, so he can take the kids out of his car unseen. With this thought, Max points out the general area where he believes the abductor lives. However, officers Miller and Wright are not interested in his claims and simply question him. Max then reveals that he is new in town and is staying in his brother's house. As they leave, Miller advises Max to tidy up before his brother returns, pointing out the suspicious substances on the coffee table. As Max snorts the powder, Finney remains trapped in the basement just below him. Soon, the kidnapper arrives with food and asks Finney for his name, explaining that he usually reads the boys' names from the newspapers, but something is different this time. When Finney gives a fake name, the man drops the food and tosses him a newspaper, revealing that he already knows Finney's real name. The kidnapper claims that he would have let Finney go before walking out and leaving the door unlocked again. Before Finney can open the door, the phone rings, but no one speaks. Upstairs, the exhausted kidnapper fights to stay awake while waiting for Finney. Instead, the boy gathers the spilled food to eat, then goes to sleep. Finney wakes up to dripping sounds and discovers a dead body hanging in midair, blood dripping onto the floor. The body points to a phone, and a new voice warns Finney that the grabber has stopped sleeping. The voice belongs to another victim, Griffin, who explains that the grabber has hasn't killed Finney because he hasn't played the game. Griffin reveals that the grabber is using an old bike lock for the storm door, with the combination carved on the wall. Finney musters up courage to go outside, sneaking past the sleeping grabber. Finney successfully unlocks the bike lock on the storm door, but is interrupted by a barking dog. The grabber wakes up, and Finney runs outside. The man chases him, tackles him, and threatens him to remain silent. They wait until the neighbor's porch lights turn off. The next day, Gwen questions her dreams, and Finney receives a call from Vance's ghost. Gwen also dreams about Vance's arrest, and overhears his conversation with Finney on the black phone. She sees a house number as the police transport Vance. Vance instructs Finney to break a wall and remove a panel to access a storage room blocked by a freezer. Vance's ghost emphasizes revenge, smashing a bottle in anger. Finney follows the instructions, but the freezer door is locked from the outside. Exhausted, he receives a call from Robin, who encourages him not to suffer the same fate. Robin teaches Finney how to throw a punch and use the phone receiver as a weapon. Finney receives a final call from Vance, who urges him to use what they give him to escape. Following Robin's advice, Finney fills the phone receiver with dirt and creates a tripwire using the cable. Meanwhile, Gwen encounters ghosts of the grabber's victims while searching houses. She falls off her bike but realizes she's at the house she's been looking for. Gwen calls the detectives, Wright and Miller, while Max suspects the grabber's location. Finney hears creaking from the phone and sees the receiver move. As the lights turn on, he prepares to fight. Unexpectedly, Max enters, revealing that his brother is the grabber. The grabber returns, swinging an axe at Max 
detectives arrive, finding Gwen outside. The grabber blames Finney for his brother's death and calls his dog to attack. The police forcefully enter an abandoned and empty house. Meanwhile, the kidnapper, known as the grabber, sets a trap for his intended victim, Finney. The grabber places his dog's leash near the door and suddenly swings an axe at Finney. However, Finney manages to dodge the attack. As the grabber chases Finney, the boy pulls a hidden cable, causing the grabber to trip and fall into a pit that he had previously dug. Finney then attacks the trapped grabber, using a phone to punch him. Despite being overpowered, Finney puts up a fight. During the struggle, Finney removes the grabber's mask, causing the unmasked kidnapper to panic. This gives Finney the opportunity to wrap the phone's cord around the grabber's neck and strangle him. Suddenly, the phone rings, and Finney puts the receiver against the grabber's ear. Through the phone, the grabber hears mocking voices from Finney's previous victims, until Finney ultimately snaps the grabber's neck, killing him. In a nutshell, Finney uses meat to distract a dog, allowing him to escape. Meanwhile, an officer discovers a hidden basement door, where the grabber buries victims. Gwen hugs Finney before the police arrive, and Terence reunites with his children. Wright reveals that the grabber owned two houses, one for keeping victims alive, and the other for burial. Later, Finney returns to school, gaining newfound confidence. And with that, the movie ends. I hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen and don't forget to subscribe for amazing videos. See you in the next one.